Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of Paint by Minis. As always, my name's Adam. And in this episode, we're talking all about how to paint Space Marine faces. And more specifically, how to paint Caucasian skin tones. Now faces have traditionally been very difficult to paint. And there's a few reasons for that. Typically, they're the smallest part on the model. So even getting the brush where you want it is extremely difficult to new painters. But not only that, as human beings, we are predisposed to looking directly at the face. It's just something in our genes. And this happens even with miniatures. So you've got the additional pressure of knowing that as soon as someone picks up the model, the first thing they're going to look at is the face. Now these are some things that we don't have much control over, but the things we do have control over are things like the colours that we want to use and how to define the volumes, the lights and the darks. So instead of focusing on the things that we can't control, we should focus on the things that we can control. Now just to preface this, I'm not saying this technique is going to win you awards or anything like that, but it's a very good way of painting a lot of skin, a lot of faces, all in one go and really quickly and to a pretty good standard. So let's jump to the bench now and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So first step with any paint job is to get a good layer of primer down. Now I prefer a rattle cam primer as I feel like the primer hid here is a lot better. I've just gone for a grey primer here but to be honest the undercoat of this primer the colour doesn't matter at all so use whatever you've got. I've also just attached the head with a little bit of blue tack to a cork holding handle which I've made. It sounds fancier than it is but it's literally just a cork from a wine bottle and I've blue tacked it to a small 28mm base at the bottom just so it sits flat. Things like this are great if you're working with small details that haven't yet been attached to the main model. So we're using this GW paint, Barak Nar Burgundy, but to be honest, any desaturated purple will do. I'm gonna apply this with a airbrush, but to be honest, you could hand paint this bit. The airbrush isn't required for this step. So there's a couple of reasons why we're starting out with this dark burgundy color. The first and most simple is that we're just establishing the dark tones of the model. Because it's a nice deep purple, it will provide a nice natural shadow and contrast to the other colors that we're gonna use. But secondary, and probably more important to making the skin look realistic, is that human skin tone is actually made up of a variety of complex colours that you wouldn't normally think of. When you think flesh tone, you usually think of peach colours. But if you look deeper than that, there are some yellow peach tones in human skin, but there's also green, blue, purple. So adding purple to the shade will actually make it look much more realistic. If you're painting with GW paints and you're using the flesh tones, at the end of the painting session you might look at the face and think it looks a bit ill. And this is because they're simply using one note colours like yellow or red and the skin tone doesn't have any purple or greens in it to counteract this. So now that we've established a nice rich deep dark shadow colour, we're going to move on and highlight the model. For this step I'm using a white ink and this one is just a Liquitex ink but honestly any acrylic ink will be fine. So the trick with this step is we are going to zenithly highlight the face. In basic terms this just means we're going to shoot at a 90 degree angle facing down to provide a natural looking highlight to the model imitating where light would strike from above. This is where the technique really comes together because it's going to provide a really nice natural gradient for us between the deep dark purples and what will eventually be the higher points of the skin tone. I do also want to briefly mention that if you don't have an airbrush you can still mimic this technique with a white rattle cam primer. Just do the exact same steps and zenithly highlight at a 90 degree angle facing down. You'll just have to be a little more gentle with it because you can't control how fast the white spray will come out. So just do gentle passes if you are using a rattle can and build up the layers slowly. Just to add really quickly, I went around and painted the shroud around the face black. There's no real reason for this and it's not a step that you need to replicate. This is just to make it look a bit neater. I didn't want anyone thinking that I'd missed a step. So now that we've established the light and dark and the gradient in between, it's time to put an actual flesh tone over this. For a nice quick easy step, I'm going to use this contrast paint called Gullum and Flesh. So contrast paints are actually a really fantastic tool to use in situations like this. Because they're semi-transparent and they find their way into shadows while still tinting the highlighting surface, when you've already worked and established those shadows and highlights, this just does all the work for you. 
So all I do is apply a decent amount to the face, making sure I cover every area adequately. And then what I quickly do is just rinse my brush off and using a still damp brush, I will just tap away areas that I don't want a heavy buildup of contrast paint on. The biggest area is gonna be the top of the head because it's a nice big flat area. If you leave the contrast paint alone on areas like this, you'll find that it collects in little pools and dries, making horrible stain marks. So a simple damp brush while the contrast paint is still wet will completely rectify this problem for us. While I have the damp brush, I'll also work my way around the rest of the face, just making sure the contrast isn't pooling in any areas that I don't want it to. It's much easier to do a few thin coats like this than it is just to do one big coat and it dry in a way that you don't like. At least this way we have a lot more control over the finish. So once this layer of Gulliman and Flash has dried, this is what we're looking like. With only one layer, it is quite a subtle effect. So what I chose to do was a second layer in the exact same process, applying it quite liberally and then with a damp brush, just tapping away the areas where I didn't want it to settle. On the left here is just the single pass and on the right is after I'd done a second coat. This is the final step of the process, so if you prefer a lighter skin tone, then just do one. Or if you prefer a darker and richer skin tone, just do a second layer like on the right. And there we have it, the finished paint job. I really hope this helps in your painting of skin tones, specifically the Caucasian skin tone. This is such a fast method and so easily reproducible that you could do this on any skin tone model that you have and get them all bulked out and painted up really, really quickly. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you like what you're seeing. I also have an Instagram account where you can look at work in progress and models that I have featured on the channel. And I would also really love to hear any feedback you've got in the comments below. So that's it. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.